Hey YouTube, this is Steve. I got a quick video here. Perhaps it can help someone in the future that's working on this as well. Uh, what I have here is I have a motion computing um, tablet. One of the original tablets ever made, really. It's by a company called Motion Computing. Um, just by rec looking at it, you can probably recognize the, the model number here. Um, let me explain what I got here. I have this running Crunchbang, which is a, del a derivative of um, Arch Linux which is a derivative of the Debian operating system, all Linux based. Let me show you what I got here. This is um, the, the stylus sticking out. Don't worry about that. This is power input. This is a speaker. Remember, um, the speaker actually has to be plugged into the microphone port and the microphone port is now the speaker port. So the microphone and speaker are reversed when you run Linux on these things. This is my um, keyboard USB which allows me to run my wireless keyboard and mouse off the same port because there's only um, this runs both um, it's this is connected to the re, uh, receiver here what else do we have we have this the other USB port because this only has two USB ports this one um, goes to an external Western Digital, my book, three terabyte. This is a USB 3.0, but this only operates in USB, I don't know, 2.0, which runs down and goes under my desk, which is hooked up to, um, which is used in the crash plan software. So my other computer in the other room and my friends and family, they send all their data across the internet to this computer, and this computer stores all their data encrypted on this external hard drive. So if their computer ever crashes, well, now they have their computer, their stuff all backed up. They can um, reinstall their operating system or buy a new computer, reinstall CrashPlan on their own computer, hit restore, and their data goes from my from my external hard drive through the computer, through the internet, back to their computer, and they're working again. So <clears throat> this is running um, Crunchbang Waldorf, W-A-L-D-O-R-F edition, and... Um, I'm running the 32-bit edition on here because it's a 32-bit operating system. I also have a webcam up here, simple Logitech, hooked up. It works fine on Crunchbang. Um, it is the Logitech, uh, I don't know what that is, but that's what it looks like. It's kind of old, but it does the trick. I don't use it often, but it's there if I need it. And um, that's not plugged in at the moment because I only got two USB ports. And um, I want to show you how quickly this powers on with Crunchbang installed. Now, this is just a fresh system installed. Um, I even I have installed um, I have installed uh, CrashPlan, so that's going to boot up as a process in the background. The GUI never shows unless you unless you type in CrashPlan GUI into the terminal to bring up the GUI interface for the service. So you won't see Crash Plan actually start up. It's a service. Um, I installed HD Parm, um, which allows me to control the actual hard drives themselves. Um, turn on, turn off DMA. Turn on, turn off um, how quiet they run. Turn on or turn off um, how often they spin down, etc. To save um, energy and to save their um, lifespan. Um, now... <coughs> I never, I never use this computer. This just runs. It has usually um, some uh, techno being streamed from Shoutcast.com, and I have I installed Audacious to um, run the stream. So it really should not be touching um, the, the hard drive. So this hard drive will spit down after ten minutes, and then the other hard drive I have down here, which um, stores all the crash plan data, that spins down after ten minutes as well because um, crash plan will only allow data to be sent to it during the hours of sleeping which is from like uh between midnight and 8 a.m so all the hours all the other 16 hours during the day i don't want the external hard drive being spun up it's a waste of energy and it's lifespan so i'm um, it powers it's it for uh two-thirds of its life it is sleeping so that's my setup here and uh today is february 25th or something um, 2014. So let's power this on. 
there we go. See the little blue lights shoot up. Let me turn this light off. So if you look right here, we have... Let me pause this BIOS by hitting pause on the keyboard. It's a Phoenix Net BIOS 4.0, release 6.0. Um, this the copyright is 1985 to 2003, Phoenix Technologies. Um, the tablet is a motion computing, and the model number is LE1600 tablet. The BIOS is the A09. The CPU it's running is a Intel Pentium M, as in Michelangelo, processor, 1.5 gigahertz. Um, it's running, what is this running? It's running, um, I believe it's running 512 megabytes. Yes, it's running 512 megabytes of internal RAM. I have the system BIOS shadowed. I have the video BIOS shadowed. Um, here it says the, uh, the pen interface of the tablet is initialized, so I can actually use, it, use the stylus only to tap on the screen and do stuff. You can't use anything else except for the stylus. Um, there's a fixed disk that it found. And then it's saying double tap the pen with your stylus on a screen or press F2 to enter, enter setup. Or I can hit F12 to enter Pixie Boot, PXE. So let me hit pause again and resume this. There we go. Or spacebar, that spacebar. Grub loading, welcome to Grub. Countdown of four, three, two, it's gonna run in 3.20. PAE edition. They have um, a non-PAE for older computers and then PAE for, you know, modern computers and stuff. Now, I just, I just wrote the configuration file for HD Parm to control the spin down of the hard drives and all. So hopefully it boots up correctly um, with that. Um, config file being loaded to control the hard drives. If not, I have to uh, type in N O H D P A R M at the boot up. <clears throat> the white light here is my Wi Fi blinking. Um, the one above it is the hard drive being accessed. The one above that is charging, and the one above that is power. So number one is power, number two is charging, number three is hard drive access, and number four, the white one, is the uh, Wi-Fi. The microphone is here, and it, it works fine, the internal microphone. Or maybe it's down there. <laughs> I don't know where it's located. And then it's up and ready, it's ready to go. Um... Conky on here is reporting that I have one gigabyte of RAM available. It's sitting here idling, and the CPU is at 3%, 9%, 10%, so it's doing a little bit of processes in the background. It's probably booting up a couple extra surfaces. It's, it's using 136 megabytes of RAM, this system. And the RAM free is 633 megabytes. Swap is at zero of two gigabyte, and my this this is running a uh, fifty three gigabyte internal hard drive, and forty seven gig are free. So it's a very small system being ran here. So forty seven, forty eight, forty nine, fifty, fifty one, fifty fifty three. We only we only have six gigabytes being ran here. And a lot of the gigabytes is taken up because I installed VirtualBox and I have um, a, a couple VirtualBox uh, installations on here of um, with um, some guest uh, brain systems. And each one of them is taken up like 512 to 1 gig each. So when I first installed this a couple weeks ago, or two or three weeks ago, um, the home directory, or the actual hard drive itself, I should say, was only using 3 gigabytes 
So a complete in complete install of Crunchbag Linux Waldorf only uses three gigabytes of installation data. Uh, oh, and today is the 23rd of February 2014. So as you can see, I have it set up. A few things to get you going when you're using um, this operating system. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. There we go. I'm using my phone here. Um, some things to get you going on here is to know that you have one and two. This bar says one, this bar says two. These are your virtual desktops, one and two. I, I don't use these, I don't, do not like them. Up here you have your clock, your speaker, your volume management rather, your battery, your clipboard management, and then your Wi-Fi um, configuration. All that popped up there by default. Conky popped up by default. Um, I changed the background to this. Um, if you left click on a desktop, nothing happens. If you right click on a desktop, you get your menu. This, there's no start button in the corners on Crunchbang, so I, I prefer that. It's a little bit more faster. Um, so right click, you can type in, you can click Run Program. Run Program allows you to type in, like for example, if I type in Ice and hit Tab, it will auto complete it and say, Oh, you want Ice Off or Ice Weasel? And I say, I want Ice Weasel. Or I can type in I C E W and hit Tab, and it says, Oh, you want Ice Weasel which is the slimmed down version of Firefox. Now you can do it that way. You can also hit Alt on your keyboard and F2, which brings up the same exact thing we just had up. So again, Ice, W, Tab, and there it is. Or there's a more minimalist version, um, which you'll see pop up at the very bottom. I hit Alt F3, and on the bottom, it has all my things I can, I can, I can launch in an alphabetical order into um, filter down, I can type in things. I can type in I. Now it lists everything. Everything down the bottom now begins with or has an I in it. So I type in I C E W and only one thing's available Ice Weasel. So I can then hit enter. So doing it that way, you don't have to press tab. So you can save one keystroke by using um, the Alt F3 rather than Alt F2. Um, <clears throat> so that, that's a quick way to launch things on this computer. Escape gets out of it. Um, for example, to launch Audacious, I hit Alt F3, type in AUD, and automatically, um, Audacious is the first one in alphabetical order on my computer, so, um, on the stuff it lists down here. I can launch Audacious, I can press right on my keyboard and go to AUD tool, press right again, I can go to Blues Test Audio, and there's lots of Pulse Audio popped up because it has the word AUD in it, Audio. But the first one on here is Audacious, so I just hit Enter, and it's going to launch Audacious and probably start streaming techno. Play. And this is coming from a really crappy $1 dollar store um, speaker. I don't have external speakers have hooked up yet that play well because I didn't buy them yet so let's get out of there um, so this video primarily is to show you um, that w Waldorf Crunchbank does run perfectly fine on these tablets here by motion computing well this model which I told you in the which I told you the model number and when, when the BIOS was posting um, and also to show you what Crunchbang is all about um, so where was I? Oh, right click and then you have other things. You have the, these things you're going to use a lot. This one says terminal. This one says web browser, file manager, text editor, and media player. You can change these default buttons, what they do. Like media player, if I click that, it's probably going to open VLC, but I would prefer that to open um, Audacious because I use music on here, not video. So I can change the default program settings down here in settings settings and then uh, edit default applications and in here I can edit like if I click if I click terminal which terminal do I want do I want like bash or I want like terminator to open I love terminator web browser do I want web browser to launch the default ice weasel or do I want it to launch firefox or midori or opera um so ice weasel comes default in the computer so but you can change all that stuff um, text editor uh, is Genie by default. File manager is, what's the file manager? Let's see, help about, it's using Thunder. 
or Thunar or Tunner, which I like a lot. Uh, media player is VLC. As under accessories, we have uh, Catfish, which is your file search program. You can find stuff really fast on your computer. Archive Manager, which is for zip and RAR and etc. files. Genie Text Editor. Task Manager, which just basically launches a terminal running HTOP, which is similar to TOP, T-O-P, but this runs H-T-O-P, which is, you know, this. And you can probably see on here that right now it's being separated by CPU percentage. What's really using my CPU on here is nothing really, because my CPU is only running at, according to Conky, uh, HTOP run really HTOP really works your CPU. So if I close HTOP, my CPU will drop down to eight percent, three percent. It hovers at about three percent. Um, I'm still only using 146 megs of RAM so far. Let's see, we have uh, Genie, T HTOP, Terminator, which is your, t your terminal, which I prefer. Thunder File Manager, and then Thunder File Manager as root. Under Graphics, we have GIMP, which I never use. I prefer uh, Pinta, which is P-I-N-T-A. Let's see if I can install that real fast. Alt-F2, Terminal, or Term, Tab, Launch Terminator. Sudo apt get install uh, pinta p i n t a enter my password not correct i think i forgot a letter invalid oh install spell wrong Oh, okay, so um, the following packages were automatically installed and no longer required. Pinta is already, oh, I already have Pinta installed. Ha! So if I hit Alt F3 or Alt F2 or whatever, I type in Pinta and hit enter, and it launches Pinta. Um, Pinta is basically the free, the open source free clone version of um, the Windows program called Paint.net, P-A-I-N-T dot N-E-T. Um, actually, if you go, I think if you go to paint.net, you can either buy paint or you can, um, download the paint.net program, which is a really, really good program. I like it for its simplicity of, of filters and cropping, but Pinta is a clone of that. Let's get out of there. Um, so I'll, I will add that manually into the graphics, um, portion here. Um, one thing about, one thing about CrunchBang is that if you install a program with apt-get or aptitude, it doesn't pop up in a proper, proper menus here. So I have to edit these manually or just, you know, launch, launch them manually by, which I prefer to just hit Alt F2, Alt F3 and type in what I want and hit enter. That's so much faster than using the mouse and, um, drilling down. But what else have we got on here? We have, uh, graphics. We can, uh... View Nior, Image Viewer, which is your standard uh, vi uh, image viewer. Take a screenshot. You can do it now in 5 seconds and 10 seconds or choose a selected area. Multimedia, VLC, Volume Control, and XF Burn. Um, but notice that Audacious didn't pop, is not here. Under Network, we have um, Browsers. What browsers do we have? We, can, we have Ice Weasel by default installed, but we can also click Install Chromium or Install Google. Chrome or install Opera as one click installation, or you can do it with with aptitude. We have GFTP, uh, transmission BitTorrent client, um, XChat IRC client, remote file systems, remote desktop. You can um, use the standard viewer or click install VNC server. So this comes with a VNC viewer by default, or you can click this, which will automatically install the VNC server so people can view your computer from afar. Under SSH, we can edit the SSH config file, which is which is um, in your home directory, there's a folder called .ssh, which is hidden, slash config. We also have services like Dropbox, which you can click install Dropbox or find out more about Dropbox. So Dropbox might be funding CrunchBang a little bit financially, I don't know. 
um, or Crunchbang really, really likes Dropbox, and they want you to use it. Um, with that said, let's go over to Office. Under Office, we have LibreOffice, which I, um, which I have to install by clicking Install LibreOffice. Google Docs, Abbey Word, which I like, Genomeric Spreadsheet, which I like, Calculator, and Evince PDF Viewer. Now, I should mention that during installation, on your first boot up, there's a there's an installation script or an aut automa or, or an automation script that runs. So this screen will pop up here, and then um, a term terminal will open up and say, hey. Let's do some fun stuff. Do you want print support? Yes or no? If you hit yes, it will download it and install it. If you say no, it will skip that. Do you want um, LibreOffice installed? Yes or no? If you click yes, it will download and install it. No, it will skip it. <clears throat> so this way, um, the, 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 the ISO that you download of CrunchBang is quite small. Um, I believe it was like uh, 700 or 800 megabytes. Um, <clears throat> And they left a lot out, but they give you the ability to quickly install it over the internet as soon as you boot up on your first round. And it's simple as pressing a yes or no into the terminal when it asks you. Um, so I chose no for LibreOffice because I probably won't ever use that because I prefer on this computer here, I prefer to run Abbey Word or Genomeric under Office. So Abbey Word is this here. It's a simple word processor. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but it has probably all that you're going to need, and it runs very fast. It boots fast, too. Under Office, I'll get a genomeric spreadsheet. Pops up real fast. It does what you got to do. It might not have all the bells and whistles as LibreOffice, but it gets the job done. Um, also, you can click Places here. You can click Recent Files here. Under Settings, we have Compositor. You can restart it, disable, or edit your compositing settings. Conky, you can edit or restart Conky. Under D menu, you can change, you can edit the startup script. There's also a button below that says help, and also the main page is there. GM run, config file, open box, config, edit, GUI menu editor, etc. The terminator config file, TINT2 or TINT2 config file, or restart it. Display settings. It's using um, a render, A R, A N D R, screen layout editor. Also, there's the the help pages for it. No, under notifications, you can change those settings. Edit the default applications, which control um, these applications up here, like browser, file manager, text editor, media player, and terminal. Um, user interface settings, power management, which controls. Um, the basics, like when the screen should go to sleep and et cetera, screensaver and choose your wallpaper. Under the system, we have printers, which I, on that startup script I was talking about, the, the post installation startup script, I chose yes, please please install printer configuration, uh, printer help, printer access. And I, I haven't done it yet, but I can click configure printers and we'll see what it does. Root password. I probably typed it in wrong. I'm on a weird angle because I'm like behind the camera. Let's go back down to that. Printers, configure printers. Oh, got it that time. All right, so we have a, a default built-in PDF printer. If I click um, server, I can connect to a server printer. All right, so I can connect to the cups server and hit connect. Probably is gonna launch my web browser, but let's just forget I did that. All right, so back to the menu. Under system, we have printers, Gparted, which helps you learn more about your, your configuration of your hard drives. Synaptic Package Manager, which is the GUI front for aptitude or apt-get. And user login settings, like you, don't, you can make it, you can uh, add or remove <laughs> users, groups, and also, you can choose the, the the users to just log in without having to type in their password, even though they have one. Under Gparted, you have to type in a password, of course. But that's the system. It's very, very simple. Very, very fast. Very peppy. Um, you saw how fast the system booted up. Now, let's see how fast it shuts down. If I choose Exit, 
Um, I can choose cancel, log out, suspend, reboot, or power off. Let me just um, reboot it. Uh, we could do it, see how fast it shuts down, see how fast it boots back up. Reboot. Rebooting, please stand by. Linux Waldorf. Crunch bang. All right, it's rebooting right now. LE1600 is a tablet model number by motion computing. FYI. Load and grub. Again, you can choose um, the recovery mode or the standard mode or let it count down in five seconds and automatically boot up. You press C to um, to throw commands at the the boot the boot um, launcher by pressing C or press E E E for to edit the commands. Um, I'm running um, Crunchbang G N U Linux or GNU. Um, then the kernel the kernel is three point two point zero dash four dash six eighty six dot P A E or maybe that's the Crunchbang edition. 3.2.0.4-686-PAE. I'm not quite sure there. But anyway, we'll enter the first one here. Please wait. INIT version 2.88. Your initiation scripts version 2.88. Using make file style concurrent boot and run level S. Check a file system FSCK from utility Linux 2.20.1. Activate a swap file swap done. Start in common Unix printing system cups. It's looking for a device, something not found. I don't know what that was all about, but that's what Crunchbang does to me. I'll get a little closer here. And it's loading. 86 megabytes of RAM use running. It started in the desktop background. It still has to boot up the top menu at the top of the screen. 105 megabytes used. 106 megabytes used. All right, it popped up at the top. 113 megabytes used. 117, 118, 21, 22, 25. 127 megabytes used. 129, 130. So it's still loading the system, as you can see, but it's it's able to be used. Right click, terminal, etc. 144 megabytes used. Let me close the terminal. 138 megabytes used. The system's been up for exactly two minutes in five, four, three, two, one. 130, but 138 megabytes in use. The CPU idles at 2% to 3%, and the system is fully booted. Um, now, for those of you that want to see what Crash Plan is all about, um, the quick way to boot it up is to open up your terminal, or if you're on Crunchbang, you can hit Alt F2 or Alt F3 and type in Crash and hit, and hit Tab. Nothing happened. Crash Plan Tab. Nothing happened. I don't know how to launch Crash Plan on the system. Let's hit Escape out of there. Alt F3, the one at the very bottom of the screen crash nothing shows up so that means I have to go manually um, by open up a terminal and find out where crash plans installed so I'll type in where is crash plan crash plan is found in user local crash plan so CD to user local crash plan hit enter now I'm enter LS what's inside we have the bin, the cache, the conf, the engine, the install variables, language, library, skin, upgrade, etc. Now if I type in, if I go into the, the binary, cd into bin, ls, 
there we go. That's what I want right here. So if I hit type in crash plane desktop and hit enter, it's launching the GUI. This is built on Java. When you install crash plane, crash plane installs its very own custom version of Java inside its inside of its um, installation directory. So it will, so it's not going to conflict with the system's Java that it uses. So it uses its very own. Um, also, Crash Plan automatically updates itself. Um, you download Crash Plan from the CrashPlan.com, and you have to just uh, unzip, um, unarchive it, and then it has actually there's directions on Crash Plan how to install it. But you just run the simple install script and it does it all by itself. And that's how you launch it, um, the GUI that way. But the service always runs in the background, which is good to know. But I minimized um, the crash point interface, it's, and it minimizes up to here. I can also close it out by just closing it, and, but it's still running in the background. So this is my crash plan server, basically that allows all my friends and family and my other computers to send all their data to the computer and the crash plan service grabs their data, encrypts it, well actually it's encrypted before it leaves their house. Before it leaves their computer it's encrypted by their crash plan software. And it goes over to the interwebs, um, lands here, and it goes to the external hard drive which is this one, on, which is under my desk, which stores all their data in case someone's computer gets stolen or crashes, they can get all their system back and running within a, a one hour flat. Uh, also, if they ac if someone accidentally deletes a file, like, oh no, I deleted my graduation photo, they can just um, go into their crash plan software and say, hey, put that back, <laughs> restore that file as deleted, I'm an idiot, and put that back, and it will grab it from my external hard drive, throw it over the internet, back to their computer, and it pops up within seconds. Um, or the next time, yeah, within seconds. So that's, this is my crash plan setup. So, and also this is Crunchbang Waldorf running, and this has shown you that the motion computing tablet runs Crunchbang Waldorf very, very perfectly. No, I had to do no configuration. It's all just boom, works out of the box. All right, so this is a three, um, a three title um, um, video here. So we're covering three, three cool things here. The fact that motion computing tablet runs Linux, some lim Linuxes, but it runs, um, actually it's run every Linux I've thrown at it, distro-wise. I had, um, I had Bodhi Linux running on here before this, but I wanted, um, I wanted to mess with Crunchbang, so I installed, I had that running on it for a year, now I got Crunchbang running, running on here for about three weeks, to maybe two weeks now. Um, and this is my new uh, crash plan um, server thing <laughs> that's going to, um, to keep everything safe around my life, data-wise. So with that said, I'm going to end this video right here. Please click like if you liked the effort I put into this video. Go ahead, click like. Thank you. Um, now click subscribe so you get other videos about um, Linux about foreign languages, about uh, technology reviews, everything you think of that I have purchased, um, and other random things that I do in my life as um, tinkering or as a hobby. Also share this video with um, your Linux friends uh, or anyone that has a tablet like this and they, are, <laughs> they have nothing to do with it. They can install Waldorf on it in a heartbeat and have a full running snappy vir uh, Linux system that, you know, it never slows down, it's hard for viruses to attack it, does not need any virus software, everything's free, out everything's free, um, and they can have a system, uh, have a new computer in their house. Um, so like, subscribe, share, and um, write a comment or blow if you wish, uh, questions or comments or concerns, and I'll get back to you when I can. Um, and I uh, thank you for your, um, your viewing. Thanks a lot. Steve out. Bye-bye now. Oh, again, today is uh, February 23rd, 2014. Bye-bye.